Whilst we do know a lot about ancient Egypt, it's its mysteries that continue to dominate public imagination. How the hell did people build those pyramids almost 5,000 years ago, without the help of cranes or aliens? What was going on with the toilet paper people? And what about the myths that seem to have survived into modernity, like the curse of the pharaoh's tomb? But these days, science can explain almost everything, from what atoms are made of to where the clitoris is. But how many ancient Egyptian mysteries can be unraveled using modern science? Of course, a lot of ancient Egypt's mystique revolves around those fancy dead bodies they wrapped up and accessorised for posterity. And thanks to modern science, they're a little less mysterious these days. A combination of forensic medicine, pathology, CT scanning and anthropology allows us to produce virtual recreations of mummies without even opening their cases. And we can learn an awful lot from these. In fact, evidence of genetic disabilities and a lack of height difference amongst the mummies of pharaohs has even proved the level of incest in ancient Egyptian royalty. A question literally no one was asking, but now we know. Now other mysteries have proved harder to crack. Many ancient Egyptian coffins are covered in a black goo, a striking artistic choice considering that this goo covered meticulous and brightly coloured paintings underneath. Now modern chemistry has revealed that this goo was formed of plant oil, animal fat and beeswax. But questions remain. Why go through the effort of painting a mummy case just to splooge all over it? And how could this goo relate back to Egyptian theories of the afterlife? Could the black represent the god Osiris or the soil of the Nile? Or was this just a deliberate attempt to preserve the mummy? Many of these questions relate back to just how effectively the Egyptians understood the science they practiced. I think things like the mummification, the sort of, you know, the, the use of antibacterial um, materials, and they obviously develop that through time, sort of becoming more sophisticated. I mean, that that shows that there was this, I think this amazing observation and um, initiative in terms of trying these things out. We know that the process of embalming and organ removal used in mummification led them to a surprisingly detailed knowledge of human anatomy. And in fact, the ancient Egyptians' knowledge of chemical medicine also seems quite developed. They made use of early forms of toothpaste, insect repellent and sunblock. A mixtures of animal fats and alkaline salt provided them with soap to wash themselves. In fact, they even developed an early form of pregnancy tests. This involved urinating on a bag of barley seeds. If the bag quickly sprouted, there was indeed a human growing inside your belly. And amazingly, according to scientists, this test would have correctly identified between 70 and 85% of pregnancies. We know now that this is because elevated estrogen levels can stimulate seed germination. What the ancient Egyptians thought was going on is any, you know, that probably, they probably thought it was to do with gods. The ancient Egyptian pharmaceutical industry, however, was pretty haphazard. According to the Edwin Smith papyrus from 1600 BC, medical treatments included everything from honey and pomegranate juice to animal feces and cannabis. Based on surviving texts, modern doctors estimate that only around 28% of their prescriptions would have had a positive effect, and around a third of them would have just made you poo yourself regardless of what was wrong with you. Ancient Egyptian astronomy was also surprisingly on the mark, allowing them to use a 365-day calendar and construct the pyramids so that they aligned with the pole star. And later on in 276 BC, an Egyptian astronomer correctly calculated that the Earth was round, a discovery made over 2,000 years before the modern Flat Earth movement. Wackier Egyptian beliefs, for instance their rather supernumerary 1,400 gods and goddesses, have even been suggested by modern psychologists to have played a key role in dealing with psychological trauma, especially in times of conflict or disease, or just generally when giving birth, which wasn't particularly nice at the time. So there may have been a scientific benefit, even if accidental, to their slightly less scientific practices. The more fantastic mysteries we might enjoy humouring have mostly been disproved altogether. For instance, the curse of the pharaoh, which claims disturbing a mummy's tomb will lead to certain death, seems to have only evolved in the modern era. Now plenty of archaeologists related to mummy excavations have indeed met sudden and gruesome ends. And over time, Egyptologists suggested there could be a chemical explanation, a release of old microbes from the corpses in question. Modern chemistry, however, has proven that that's a load of nonsense. So the most likely explanation for the curse is a combination of dysentery and mosquitoes in 1800s expeditions, plus a dash of human hysteria.
Indeed, modern science and history can explain away many Egyptian mysteries. Aliens didn't build the pyramids, and neither did slaves. It was just skilled workers who weren't afraid of the occasional strike. Ancient pharaohs weren't from another planet, though they may have been born of incest. And mummies don't tend to get out of their coffins and chase people about. On the other hand, some ancient Egyptian mysteries have been left to the recesses of history. We don't know who the sea people were. We can't seem to find an underground labyrinth of 3,000 rooms that apparently surpass the pyramids in their awe. And we're not 100% sure why certain people were buried with actual erect genitals. But some questions, I suppose, are better left unanswered.